Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. And I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that includes you, cistern. <laughs> I beseech you, sisters and brothers, by the mercies of God, Paul is uh, trying to get our attention and um, trying to reason with us uh, by way of God's mercy. I want you to note that, that everything that is being communicated is through the mercy of God. How many can use the mercy of God in their life? How many not, can not only use it, but they need it? Not only do you need it, but you want it. Amen. So Paul said, I'm beseeching you by the mercies of God, not just mercy, but mercies, because they're new every morning, that ye, you, present your bodies. No one can present your body for you. You have to do it for yourself. You can't get in on grandma's religion. You got to get it on your own. Can't rely on mama and papa, your husband or your wife. You must. So this is what Paul is admonishing us to do. To present our bodies a living sacrifice. Now, the other part, God will take care of you. Just do the first part. If you present your bodies, because you can't make yourself holy. God would make you holy. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. What God is asking you to do of just offering yourself up as a living sacrifice it's reasonable. God is not too hard. God is not demanding. People say it's hard living for God. The Bible actually says, Jesus said, take my yoke because it's what? Easy and light. The scripture says the ways of a transgressor, that's hard. Don't let somebody tell you that living for God is hard. That giving, living for God is hard when you start get, trying to live for him. But sacrificing yourself unto him is easy. Amen. I want to preach to you this morning from defeat to victory. How many want some victory in their life? How many need some victory in their life? From defeat to, defi to victory. To <laughs> Put your hands together. <laughs> I hope that's not an indication of what I'm going to be doing the rest of the service. That's bad. Amen. I, 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 part of me think it's going to be that way. I woke up around 3 o'clock and I could not get back to sleep. And, uh, and then I wind up dozing off when it was time to wake up. And now the... Uh, now, who's ever regulating this heat is trying to kill me. <laughs> Praise God. Hopefully, we had that fan blowing and the air on. We need to check that at some point because we, I, I mean, to see if that temperature is going down because it's not, that air is not working. All right? Uh, so, I, I'm kind of jumping right now. We need to make sure that air is actually on because that air, when that thing is on, it's on. So, if it doesn't get, doesn't get cool in here, quickly. We better get it right before the summer. Amen. So I want to preach to you after I got away from that sidebar from defeat to victory. I, I uh, remember growing up as a kid or a child. I was never a, a little baby goat as a kid. But remember growing up as a child uh, my, my, my dad, he, he was into sports, and uh, at least certain type of sports, and, and um, I remember a commercial that used to come on where someone is, uh, I don't know whether it was the Olympics, and they were skiing, and you would see this guy come up 
and then crash. And then it was a terrible crash. And it was the, I don't know, it was the agony of defeat, the thrills of victory, and the agony of defeat. You heard the statement about being in the jaws of defeat. And, you know, we as Christians, you know, we, 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 we have all the, the, the rhetoric. And we, we know all the catchphrases and the religious words. God is good all the time. I'm blessed. I'm better than blessed. We always want to be toppers, one up on somebody. Amen. And, uh, and all those sayings just don't work. I don't care how much they sound good. Amen. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody want to get caught up in the cliches. And uh, uh, my daughter went to a, uh, a service um, for the youth. And it was my intent and purpose to go. And I just got my schedule all messed up. But... Uh, uh, the preaching was great from what I've been told, and uh, it wasn't, you know, a lot of times you get caught up in certain type of services where a bunch of people come together. It's the music is just for entertainment, and the preaching is just rhetoric, and I'm sorry to say, and it's all the cliche phrases that you know how to say just to get people to say, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Amen. But I like the word. <laughs> Certain things may sound good, and the word may not sound good, but it, it, it's right. Amen. It's not always going to sound good, but it's going to give you what you need. Amen. Praise God. I don't want something to tickle my ear. I want something to help my soul. I remember this the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, and regardless of all the things that we, we say and we claim, it's actually feeling better already. I don't know whether that's my imagination running away with me, but <laughs> some of y'all don't know about that. Don't hurt yourself. Amen. We have all these sayings, all these sayings, but the bottom line is sometimes as Christians, we feel defeated. We get deflated. We need somebody to pick us our caucus off the carpet. Amen. Praise God. We don't want to tell anyone that. Amen. We don't want to tell anyone we feel weak. We don't want to tell anyone, man, I'm having a bad day. Amen. We don't want to tell anyone I'm dragging and I'm struggling. Somebody asks you, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. Oh, I'm great. Oh, how you doing? Oh, God is good. Praise God. You know? Don't want to, oh, yeah, hi. Then, that person leave you all broke down, mug broke down, and everything else. We don't have to be phony and fake. Amen. If we're having a bad day, why don't we just admit it? I'm having a bad day. Praise God. <laughs> we have bad days now. But I believe with all of my heart, even though I may have a bad day, I can still have victory. I don't have to be defeated. The thing is, is that when we come to God, we come because we're defeated. You don't come to God in victory. You wait until you get everything together to come to God, you never come to God. And the people that come to God because they got it all together, they sow the seed. It's lying or deceive, one or the other. But there is victory in God. 
There is power in the Holy Ghost. There is deliverance, as we talked about last week. It doesn't come with the wave of a wand. Amen. It doesn't come with pixie dust or chance. Chance. C-H-A-N-T-S. Or chance. But it comes through God. The way victory comes is not the way we often think. Victory is not coming by God pumping you up, turning you into a Samson or a Gideon, or even, in fact, a Moses. I had one guy told me to start calling him Moses. <laughs> told me he was going to do this, that, and the other. He said, I had a dream. I was Moses, and I was leading your church. <laughs> that wasn't from God, brother. I can tell you that right now. I was leading your church to the promised land. God told me, call him Samson. I said, what was your name? What did your mother call you when you were born? I said, that's your name. <laughs> you go change it legally, I guess I'll call you that. Victory doesn't come by this great announcement, proclamation, and everything else. Victory is a process. It was something that was called D-Day. You are all, I'm, I'm sure, familiar with D-Day. If you are not familiar, you probably didn't, you probably cut your history classes. Uh, and uh, all the Allied forces stormed the beach of Normandy, and uh, it was D-Day. They were, it was going to be a day of deliverance from the tyranny of the um, German regime and the French. Was it French or Italians? Which ones was it? The Italian regime. And, and so uh, they were going to storm the beaches and uh, win the war. Now, D-Day wasn't the day of victory. It wasn't V-Day. V-Day is known throughout many countries as a commencement for a day of victory where that country was victorious. For us in the United States, our V-Day is July the 4th, our day of independence from the British nation. Amen. Many countries have a V-Day where it's a, a day of public recognition and that they won a great war. And I always thought D-Day was the V-Day. But D-Day wasn't the V-Day. D-Day was the commencement of the campaign. It was the beginning of the campaign. It was the beginning of the delib uh, of, uh, liberation, I'm sorry. It was the beginning of the uh, uh, American forces along with British and other forces that were going to make sure that this uh, regime and wouldn't take over, the fascists wouldn't take over the world. And, and it was the mark. It was the beginning. And I will tell you, it was the day that was going to be the initiation of defeat of the enemy. And so... I, we, it, it, for us as Christians, I believe we have a D-Day and a V-Day. Now, I, I just quoted a scripture, quite frankly, that gives us our V-Day. I'm going to read it again. I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, or sisters and brothers, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. I believe that when, you, when your body is presented as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God is your reasonable service, and it goes on to say some things. I believe that when we get to that place, 
Now, the problem is most of us think we're already there. I'm going to show you that we're, a lot of times we're not. Is that okay? Now, it, it's a progression, I believe. I believe we go from defeat to victory. We don't start off, I'm a living sacrifice. I don't care if you come to church. Your body, you hadn't, just because you come to church, just because I come to church, it doesn't mean I presented myself as a living sacrifice. If I still own part of me, guess what? I'm not a living sacrifice. Oh, y'all not going to like this this morning, are you? I'm not saying I'm not on my way to being one. But when I own any of me, I'm not a living sacrifice yet. I'm going to get there. That's just fact. You don't just offer up some of yourself. But here we go. Thank you, sister. I need that again. That's the truth anyhow. I want you to preach with me. Amen. Praise God. Where, where's Sister Tiffany? I know I'm going to have her preaching with me. She's been quiet. I need some Tiffany's and some... <laughs> and some Don used to preach with me. Everybody else all quiet on me. Amen. So, how many people are, are, are surrendered to God? Raise your hand. Y'all are so scared, it's sad. <laughs> He's setting me up. <laughs> Am I surrendered or am I not surrendered? I don't know. I'm just asking you a question. That I'm not, you know. We'll find out where we're going once you ask the qu answer the question. Are you surrendered? All right. We are called to surrender to God. I believe at certain points you, you did surrender to God. I believe everybody in here at some, at some point you surrendered to God. At least most of us have surrendered to God. Did that help you out? How many people in here have ever surrendered to God? <laughs> You see, the, pr the reason why we're not sure, because while it seems like it's a great thing, oh, I'm surrender, we sing the song, and I like it, don't stop, that's a, that's a nice song. Matter of fact, I mean, you may have to sur sing it after, afterwards or whatever. I love that song, and surrender is okay, but I'm just going to tell you like this, surrender, it really has a, uh, a negative connotation, and you, you understand where I'm coming from. And whilst we are called to surrender to God, I'm going to let you, let you know that. Don't think you can get out of it. We're called to surrender to God. The problem is the word surrender is, has a negative connotation because it is a battle term. It is a battle term. It implies giving up all rights to the conqueror. As I said, we go from defeat to victory. So when you first go to God, you will surrender because, oh, hallelujah. Because most of us, when we came to God, we were in a battle to surrender. And we fought and finally said, okay, God, I give up. You didn't come out of the womb, come running to God. So surrender is a battle term. It implies giving up all rights to the conqueror. When the opposing army surrenders, they lay down their arms and give up resistance. And so when we repent, we are laying down our arms and our resistance towards God. That is surrender. That's a good start, but I'm sorry, that's not good enough. We, we, we brag on it. I'm surrendered. Right. 
And I, you know, now, now this is the first time I heard it. Just, you know, maybe some of you have already heard, but I've never heard this like this before. And I, I just began to listen to the Holy Ghost and, and write. But criminals surrendered to law enforcement. Soldiers surrendered to opposing forces. We surrender to enemy combatants. So what, how is that so good? If I have to surrender, that's saying <laughs> that I was opposing before. Do you get that? It's a good start. But we, oh, I'm surrendered. Well, that only implies that, hey, I wouldn't have otherwise given, but hey, it was a greater power, an opposing force. Amen. God is not going to make us, but you know what? Sometimes God allows things to transpire in our lives to get us to a place of surrender. Okay, I give up trying to do things my way and, and trying to do things according to my thinking and my understanding and the way that I think may not be right. So, Lord, I surrender to you. The word surrender means to cease resistance to an enemy or an opponent. And even though we may proclaim when we are not living in God that we are not the enemies of God, the scripture declares something different. The Bible says that when we were enemies that Jesus died for us. When we were enemies of the cross. And every time and any time we're doing our own thing, and contrary to God, we are in opposition to him. The Bible says this, that when we love the world, we can't love him. When I follow the course of the world, I can't follow him. I'm in opposition to him. I'm opposing him and he's opposing me. And that's why in verse number two, after he says to, to, to present yourself a living sacrifice, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Surrender is great. Surrender only transpires when someone is defeated. Surrender takes place. Now, no army that's fighting against someone is going to surrender until they realize, you know what, I'm licked. And then you throw out the red flag, I mean the white flag. How many of us have thrown out the white flag? God, I surrender to you. Well, that is saying I'm defeated. That's what it's saying. And so we must go from defeat to victory. You can't have victory if you're struggling with surrender. And you can't have victory if you stay in defeat. You can't have victory if you stay in a mode of surrender. Amen. Because you must go from opposition. A, someone who's in opposition can surrender. That doesn't make me special because I surrender. Amen. If I have a gun to your head, you're going to surrender. You're going to do whatever I say. You can, you can brag about, oh, I'm surrendered. <laughs> Amen. You're only doing it because the opposing force. Has defeated you. Amen. You, you know. A, a criminal doesn't, doesn't get any brownie points. So the, the judge doesn't come and say, well, you know what? Because you surrendered to the authorities, I'm going to pardon you. That person you killed, that, that bank you robbed, that thing you did, your law you broken, hey, uh, don't even worry about it. Because you surrendered. You did a great job and you surrendered to the cops. No. <laughs> That doesn't happen. You surrendered. That's only because you had to. You have been defeated. But that's a good thing. 
When God can get me at the place where he can defeat me from my own will, my own way. That's the beginning of deliverance. I've never seen surrender in this light before. And I was, oh my goodness, <laughs> surrender is not so good. <laughs> it really isn't. It's a good start. And so, after surrender, here we go, we, we, we're getting somewhere. A person must choose to submit. Prisoners surrender. And they can remain a prisoner and in opposition. And locked up. They still surrender. <laughs> but then they must get to a place of submission. They must submit. And how many are submitted to God? <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Now, no one wants to raise. We had about three people to raise their hand on surrender and come find out everybody has surrendered. Right? Everybody, I, I gave y'all all the surrender credit. <laughs> everybody got a surrender credit. Don't worry about it. Even if you think you didn't surrender. Now, submission. Surrender will bring us to a place of submission, or it should bring us to a place of submission. The reason why God causes us to surrender and to be defeated so we can submit to him and to his will and to his way. When I surrender, I surrender my will, my freedom, and everything else. Now, I must submit to his. Submission is the act of accepting the power or authority of someone else. Submission, I'm going to say it again, is the act of accepting the power or authority of someone else. That's what submission means. If you are battling with submission... You are battling with accepting someone's authority. Now, I, I really didn't. I'm going to take a slight side, sidebar just for a second. I, you know, I, I'm learning something about submission. Now, for most people, submission is a bad word. You tell a woman they have to submit to a, a man, man, they're going to go, they gonna go straight to the, the uh, kitchen, the butcher's, Knife section. <laughs> you tell a man he got to submit to another man. He ready to go 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 to the uh, the safe and get the pull it open, get the, the gun out of the cabinet. That's just the truth. We don't like the word submission. Oh, hallelujah! Anyhow, if there's a system, we want to try to find a way around the system. We want to beat the system. We don't want to submit to the system. Uh-huh. You don't want to submit to the man. Because he's, he's the authority. He's the power. You, you don't want to submit to the man. There's something within people that you, you want to get around the man. Just like you want to get around the man, Christ Jesus. But submission is acceptance. I hope y'all still like me. I still like y'all. Submission is the act of, again, accepting the power of someone else. So the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force. It's yielding to a superior force. So even submission has a connotation that, you know, I'm being made to do it. Now, you may not think so. and It is a step up from surrender. And, and submission is good. But the connotation of su submission means this. I, I'm, I am 
submitting to doing something that's really not my will. This is the way I would do it, but I'm going to submit to you and to what you're saying. Why? Because you are a higher authority. You do recognize the higher authority, but if there wasn't a higher authority, you wouldn't do it. And you really wouldn't do it, but you know, you, you know, so it's not what I want to do. It's not what I want to do, but I'm going to do it. And so again, so submission, that's a great thing. And don't worry, we're going to get to it where we want to get to because y'all are like, oh, I don't like where we are right now. It, it, it's it's uh, something that we're commanded to do. I, I remember I used to, here's my sidebar. I told you about, you know, a couple of minutes ago, I might have a sidebar. I just had to interject something there. I remember you could not tell me I wasn't submitted years ago when I had a pastor here. And uh, um, I, anything that he would ask me to do, I would do it. You know? Um, I mean, he would ask, he said, you know, Charles, you, 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 if I ask you to do something, you, you're going to do, do it. But that was a problem. He and I, we had, we, we would, we would kind of, you know, I'm just being honest. We had our times. Uh, he, he used to call it uh, his uh, uh, on the porch uh, sessions. Have you had an on the porch session? <laughs> I know you had some on the porch session. And so we would have our on the porch sessions. And I, <laughs> Sister Valley Smiler, and, and I'm just going to tell you, I, I fought. When, th when, something, when it was something I didn't like, I had a problem, problem with. Now, sometimes I would, you know, say something quite uh, on the open, but a lot of times I would do like this. On the inside, it was. Man, please. On the inside. On the inside. The problem is what's on the inside, it comes out whether you see it or not. In certain fields of intelligence and like uh, CIA and things of that nature, operatives, and they, they are trained to look for certain tells. You, you can look at tells outside of playing cards. And, and a person can do certain things. You could tell where they're lying. You know, their eyes, you know, get to twitching and, you know, you look for every little thing. You know, uh, people just start getting uncomfortable and squirming. They look down and... You look for certain type of signs and tells to let you know when something is going on. And so things get to seeping out anyway. And see, when those things happen, the Holy Ghost is trying to let you know, you see, there's something going on here. And, and you're, you're, you're doing what you're being told to do out of obedience because when you uh, surrender... You're going to obey. Get your hands up. Walk in. You're going to obey when you surrender. And you will bring obedience into the next level of submission, but you can, you can obey without being submitted. You obey simply by being surrendered. And I thought I was submitted simply because I was obeying everything. He said, you do anything. But we kept on having these problems, you see. Serious problems. Now, I'm just going to say it this way. You know, when I had some serious problems with God, this keep going, it's continued conflict. It's a conflict of uh, submission. I've surrendered, but I'm still in opposition. I haven't submitted my will to him. Now, I, I, you know, it, it's this person that attended this church between the time we started and whatever. It, it, it's, and and this, this person is uh, uh, 
a, a, a female that has long hair uh, with, uh, and, 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 and she's a male with, with short hair. Y'all trying to say, meaning <laughs> she, she's uh, uh, five feet nine and six nine in height. She's, uh, <laughs> that's it. Uh -huh. he, he weighs uh, 300 pounds, uh, but he's, he's skinny as a rail. So, in other words, you don't know who I'm talking about. That's what, that, was, that was the whole point of the matter. <laughs> it was a blonde with blue, 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 brunette hair. <laughs> and I was having a struggle with this tall, short female. <laughs> and and I, I, I was talking to the Lord about them. Because I, I, I just couldn't figure it out. And the Lord said, they're not submitted. And I'm like, what? They do everything I tell them to do. The Lord said, you keep having these issues because they're not submitted. And that's how I got this lesson. When I was in a place with this former pastor, I, I, one day something was said. And I'm in a, a, a manifest meeting. That was one of the, that's, if y'all know what a manifest, that's one of those holy meetings. It's a conference where everybody's, everybody's holy. We all walk, everybody, everything. But, and, and, and the Lord was moving and uh, there was prophecy going on and there was uh, um, uh, in-depth teaching and revelation and everything else. I mean, people were praying and fasting and, and all that was going on. And, you know, we stayed in the building and, Sleeping there, I had to sleep and hear Brother Valley snore all night. No. <laughs> it was, it, it, you get shut in, you can't come out and fasten all week, and man, you really feel holy, right? And that guy said something, it was my past, he said something I was, I, he just said one little thing. And I went from being so holy <laughs> to the biggest devil. I had the biggest, biggest put, pitchfork, longest tail. Talk about 10 horns, I had 20 horns. It wasn't 666. It, it was 13, 13, 13. I was, I, <laughs> I was vicious. I had like TV. Hey, you know when a dog, dog I was like that. Rah! And he's like, whoa, what in the world is that? And I remember the moment I, I you know, because I was, you know, hey, praise the Lord. And he said something and it went quick, you know. My head turned around. <laughs> Amen. It was crazy. I was like, and, and something said to me, why did you respond that way? It was me talking to me. I'm a, and I was like, why did I do that? Why did I respond that way? Something triggered it. And the Holy Ghost showed me me. Because we always want to blame someone else. And accuse someone else. And question someone else's motives. Amen. And we, we spit in venom and we want to question someone else's motives. And I, I was like, what in the world was that about? And the Holy Ghost began to show me some things about my past that I hadn't dealt with. I'm like, come on, that's about that, come on. And he showed me, once I got that together, I could come to him and I said, you know what, I realized something. Could you come with me? And I said, I, you know, I saw what came out of me and everything. I saw, you know, that, that was wrong. And he said, I was wondering what, what happened. But he said something that set me off because I thought he meant something and whatever, and we had our issues. So we went, and I told him, come on, and I, you know, and I did an act of, I'm submitting to you now. Pastor, I submit to you. I know I've done any, any and everything you've asked me to do and up to that point and everything else, but we've had our issues and whatever. I would kind of do things and get outside of you know, my lane and this, that, and the other thing. I said, but I submit to you. 
And that was the beginning for me. Now, that was the beginning because that only showed me that I needed to submit. And that I acknowledged that I wasn't submitted. I was surrendered, but I wasn't submitted. But then I, then I had to go to the process of being submitted. And so God would, you know, and you're not there yet. Just because you desire to submit or you agree to submit, say, okay, God, I submit to you. Now God has to bring you to that place. Just by saying this is what I choose to do is not saying you're submitted. And when I did that and told him I submit to you, it wasn't saying I was submitted. It was saying I was willing to. Because after I said that, God, God had any and everything to come up. They had me question him, question his intent, question this, that, and the other, right? And just to get me to a place of, of submission. Thank God I got to that place. So here we go. You get, you get what I'm saying now? You're picking up what I'm putting down. Huh? Somebody's saying, I ain't picking that up. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm leaving that stuff there. Somebody else pick it up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm almost, almost done. People submit because they're either overwhelmed or outmatched. So submission means it's not my will, but I'll yield anyway. It's to surrender to an, uh, it's not, it's not surrendering to an opposing force, but submitting to a superior force. I'm going to say that again. It's not, and this is the words the Lord gave me, it's not surrendering, because that's the first thing, to an opposing force. It's submitting to a superior force. So I'm not now in opposition to opposing force, because I was in opposition towards God. I, I am not surrendering to an opposing force. Now I'm submitting to a superior force or authority. And that's the next step. Now here we go. We go from surrender to submission. And from submission to sacrifice. I'll say that again, and I'm kind of teaching. I know I'm not preaching right now. But we go from, and we must go from surrender to submission. And we say, I'm submitted. And the Bible tells us, submitting to God and resist the devil. Now, if I'm submitted, why God had to tell me to submit? Because you don't do it on your own. Why well, I'm submitting to your husband? Why God had to tell us that? Right? Why well, God has to tell me, submit to them that, uh, that, that ha have the authority over you. Obey them that have the authority and submit. That's why I said obey and submission is not the same thing. Obey them that have the authority over you, the scripture says, and submit yourself to them. So just obeying is not good enough. Just surrendering is not good enough. You have to get to a place of submission. But it doesn't stop at submission. Because if I only do something because God has the authority, right. I'm missing it. Right. 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 And you do something because someone has the authority is not the end result right. that you want to uh, get to. Okay, because it's like, okay, you know, God is man. He has the power and authority. He can crush me, so I'm going to submit myself to that. I'm going to do whatever you say even though it's not my will. See, that doesn't really sound so great. And, and, and uh, again, when you look at submission and look at somebody submitting to someone else, it's always talking about power or authority. I don't want my wife to submit to me because of authority. So then you get into the aspect of sacrifice. And that's what God is trying to get us to. Y'all okay? Y'all shell-shocked and whatever? It's, it seemed like it was one of those air raids. You know, <laughs> bombs going off, everybody's shell-shocked. 
I wish I was talking about some nice fancy. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you what. God is about to bless you. Uh, come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Come on, get up. I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, God is doing something in your life. Uh, I'm telling you what. Uh, come on and give it all. Because I know, I know, y'all. You know. After a while, that stuff get old. You get tired of being in the same old place. Amen. I can, I, can, I can go ahead and preach to you. The rabbit went in the hole. <laughs> yes. Come on, somebody. And the hole was deep. I'm telling you what, somebody, somebody need to get in the hole. It's pretty much what they do. Talk about nothing. You do all the answers. I, if you want me to do that, fine. Praise God. But the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, brothers and sisters, by God's mercies, they're new every morning, that you present your bodies not as a living sacrifice, but a living sacrifice. Now this is what the word sacrifice means. It's an act of offering to a deity, something precious, to give up something that is valuable. It's an act of giving up something value for the sake of something else regarded as more important and more worthy. I'm going to say that again. The word sacrifice means an act of offering to a deity something precious to give up something that is valuable. And that's giving up yourself, something precious to you, something valuable. You're giving, up, giving it up to a deity, meaning God. And so it's not, it's not looking at God from the position of authority. It's looking at his deity, his, it's who he is, his godliness. It's a whole different connotation. It's nothing negative in this. It's an... Uh, an act of giving, giving up something valued for the sake of someone else regarded as more important or more worthy. And so I'm giving up this that I feel like is valuable. My life is valuable to me. And, but I'm giving it up to someone that's more valuable, more worthy. He deserves it. That's why it says it's our reasonable service. He deserves all of me because he created all of me. I have breath and life because he is God. And the life he gave me, I give up and surrender to him freely. That's not the same as surrender. And it's not the same as submission. It's a different state of being. It means it's a sacrifice is something I choose to do. I'm not being made to surrender because of the opposing army. I'm not submitting and doing something that I really doesn't, don't want to do. But it's I'm doing this freely. I choose to do it. It's of my own volition, my own will, of my own free will. It has nothing to do with power, might, or force. It's free will. It's done because of value and because I've surrendered. Now and I have the victory. You see, we think victory and living for God is do, 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 do. I got I, you know, to prove something. I got to show God. You can't show God anything. 
I'm going to prove God I can do it. You know how we do. God, I'll never do this again. Stop lying to God. Now how many times I told God I'll never do something. He'll show me. Okay, go ahead. Let's see you do it on your own strength. But when I uh, submit myself and make myself a living sacrifice to him and give myself over freely, it belongs to him. I belong to him. And so now I don't have a, oh, here we go. See, now I don't have a program. Now he controls my schedule. You say, I got to work. Yeah, of course. But you know what? He tells you to work. You find out, you find out how, how many hours you're supposed to work. You find out the job you're supposed to work. You find out everything, you know, the days you're supposed to work. But I got to make a living. Can't we trust God? You see, total surrender. Come here. I'm only going to do it. You. Joseph. Come on. Darren. Mars. How many is it? I hate to get, no, I ain't getting, I'm not getting no six, six. I, I'll get six when it's time for it. <laughs> you, know, you understand what I'm saying? That's Paul Burr stuff. <laughs> I got the number of grace, five. <laughs> Amen. I was able to go from here to there and back again without moving a muscle. Simply because I trusted in some, someone that has the ability and the power. I wasn't surrendering to opposition. I wasn't doing something because somebody was making me do it. I offer it myself. That's what this is God is asking us to do. It's not hard to be a living sacrifice. And God is saying, I will carry you if you allow me to. I will get you through if you allow me to. You're worrying about how you're going to get through certain things. Become a living sacrifice. How am I going to pay my bills? They belong to him now. When your life belongs to him, everything belongs to him. What about my wife? What about my children? I said everything. Everything belongs to him. That's the only way you can have true peace. When I become a living sacrifice, I can prove with that, with, with that good will, huh, an acceptable will, huh, and perfect will of God is. It's my reasonable service. Why do we fight to get to this point? A living sacrifice. But I won't own anything. I won't have any control of anything. You would rather control something than allow God to control it? The problem is, is trust. I trusted those guys to not let me fall. See, now, if you're not going to trust, if you have a difficult time trusting God, you're not going to let him carry you to places. Uh-huh. You put me down, God. I, I got it from here. I'll take it. Now, I know this is foreign to some people. Uh, Y'all can come. 
I know, I, I, I know this is funny. This is strange. This is like, no, don't talk about that. Come on, you, you know, there's a God help those who help themselves. That's in the book of Abomination, chapter 6 and verse number 66. I, I, I quote again, Abomination, chapter 6 and verse number 66. That's that verse. God help those who help themselves. I'm going to build up my nest egg so I can give my, you know how many times people tell me, I, I'm, I, they tell me I'm going to do this and build up my nest egg and do this work and everything else so I can be available to God. And the more they do that, the less they're available for God. I'm, I'm almost done. You can go ahead and get me loaded. You ain't going to play our surrender? <laughs> Come here, young lady. I just heard ching, 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 ching points. <laughs> Frequent flyer points. Um, that was a time where the Lord was asking me to trust him with finances. You know how it is. That's somebody's money. And um, so I, I had to make less money in order to do the will of God. I'm just using this as an example. You know why? Because everybody relates to that green stuff. That's not a person in here that can't relate to that. Even if I had some teenagers, teenagers, can def they can definitely relate to that. So, I had to take a job making a whole lot less money. Say, so, hey, this is what I'm feeling to do. Should we do it? Yes, go ahead. You got, you got my back? I got it. Okay, we're going to do this thing. We had some, you know, rough periods. I remember getting the revelation on paying tithes. When she was pregnant, couldn't work because she was having difficulty with her pregnancy. My check was being garnished from stuff I did before I came to God. And it wasn't pretty. And all of a sudden, God's going to give me a revelation on tithes. He got a sense of humor. And I paid tithes when I couldn't afford to pay tithes. I didn't know how I was going to pay my rent but, and how I was going to pay my gas and electric and car, but we paid our tithes first. Gave it off, and guess what? God provided, I don't know how we got through that period. We look back and say, what in the world happened? But anyway, so this is years later, and God's saying, hey, you, you got to trust me with this. You know, I was seeking the will of God, the purpose of God, giving my life totally to him and ministry and all that. And so I did that. I, you know, everybody was saying I'm crazy because I was, I think it was eight, seven, eight thousand dollars less, maybe more than that, I can't remember. Yeah, eight, eight, eight or nine thousand less than what I was making. And people were like, are you crazy? You won't give up that, that amount of money. I said, this is what God is asking me to do. Of course, they wouldn't understand that. So years later, God was saying, hey, this is what I want you to do in your life and everything, the course of your life for his will, his purpose, his time, his kingdom. You need to cut your hours back. What? So I went from 40 to 36 to 32 to God saying, that's it. You're just going to be full-time full in the ministry and you're going to lose you thought $7,000 was something. <laughs> You're going to lose a whole lot more. Okay. He started me off by taking jobs that were what we call soft money. Where 
You know, hard money is you go work for the city and all that, the money is there. You're going to work, you're going to get your pay. But I worked in re for research grants, meaning it's soft money. You, you know, the money go, I'm sorry? It was contractual work, so it can be here today, gone tomorrow. And I had to begin to trust him. Got past all that. Then we got to a place my wife was telling me that this was a hard, it was easy for me to say, okay. And so uh, my wife got to a place where she was like having issues with her job and all that. And she was feeling like it was time. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, so we had, you know, the, at that particular time, that was now that she had this, she was covering, the, having the insurance, covering the insurance and the benefits and all that because I was working for the church and it wasn't there and 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 uh, and so all that was going to be gone. And she made significant money that time, uh, really significant money. Um, well, in my eyes, you know, it was it was well above a half a. Uh, Anyway, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was significant. And I'm talking about we losing all that. I'm just going to say it. It was probably cl close to seventy thousand dollars, sixty something thousand. We, it's like boom, that's gone. Can you, we, you going to trust him? I don't know how we're going to make it. We at one point. You know, because we were, you know, making both of us when we both were working was making significant enough money, and you know, we bought a house. Uh, and the house I'm staying in, I'm just gonna say this, and some people, are, you know, sometimes people look at what someone has and say, "Yeah, see, that pastor, he, you know, living in this nice house, and he's whatever." No, I got that house way before, and tried to give it up. And if you want it, you can have it. You, you I try to sell it. My wife did try to sell it. She sold everything in the house. We, we, we was living on cardboards. Trying to force God's hand. She's like, well, if I sell everything, we got to move. She said, okay, I put up a sign. I didn't tell her I knew we wasn't going to move. I just, I just didn't feel that was the will of God and whatever. And we put up a sign, didn't have any, no one, no one tried to buy the house. After we took the thing off the market, now they get people wanting <laughs> crazy but then you know she, okay she's not going to work we feel like it's the will of God I don't know how things are going to make it I don't know how we're going to survive she's been out of work for two years her anniversary was last week God does provide See, some of you think you need a whole lot of money rolling in. I don't need a bank account bigger than my God. I need a God that's bigger than my bank account. I need a God that's bigger than my payroll. You got to trust God. Again, I'm not talking about money, but see, you relate to money. I understand that. We all relate to money. Anybody tell you, know, I don't, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. I, I understand it. I don't love money. I just like it a whole lot. Amen. So, you understand that. I'm talking about being able to surrender. Now, don't go do something foolish. Well, the past say that I'm going to go quit my job. I never told you that. Don't go blaming me. I'm going to go take a pay cut. I never told you that. I never said that. <laughs> Not telling you what to do. Not running your life. I'm giving you examples. Wherever, whatever in your life, you need to surrender to him and to trust him so you can become a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God. And it's your reasonable service. You're going to, have to, you're going to get tired of Surrendering because you've been defeated. Keep trying to obey out of obedience and submission and giving yourself, okay, I'm going to do it, I'm going to submit, whatever. That's great. 
You need to be submitted. But when you are a living sacrifice, you don't have to worry about submission. Or battling with submission. You struggle with submission. Just become a living sacrifice. God, I surrender. I submit. And I sacrifice myself to you. Won't you stand to your feet? If anybody is willing to do that, to become a living sacrifice, I want you to come down to this altar. I'm just talking about being willing. I'm not asking you to do something. If you're a guest, I'm not asking you to join this church. This is between you and God. In Jesus' name. I'm not asking you to change anything, give up jobs or anything. I'm just talking about the willingness to become a living sacrifice unto him. Come on, all you got to do is be willing God to get you there. Don't worry about how you're going to get there. That's God's business. lifted high. And my heart open wide, my soul just magnify you, Lord. With my head lifted high, and my heart open wide, my soul just magnify Come on in you, Jesus' name. Lord. That's it. A living sacrifice. With my head lifted high. In Jesus' name. And my heart Come on, church, help us to pray. Come on, that's it, sir. That's it, ma'am. Offer yourself a living sacrifice to him. And my heart open wide. My soul to magnify you. Come on, that's it. Lift your hands to him right now. With my hands lifted high. And my heart open wide.